and welcome to the fourth part of this Pi Game tutorial. Today we are going to be adding some trees as borders to the edge of our map. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the sprite.py and we are going to create a new class in here called tree. And let's go ahead and just put it right here underground. So we'll do class tree iGame.sprite.sprite and now we'll define the initialize underneath it and what this does is whenever it's called it'll go ahead and fill in all this information about this class so we'll do def double underscore in it for initialize double underscore and then we will bring in the parameters of self game x and y now then under here, we will go ahead and start plugging in our information for the tree class. So we'll do self.game equals game self dot underscore layer equals block layer. And we need to go ahead and go back to our config file and create a block layer. So we want it to be between the ground and the player layer. So we want it to go ahead and draw. We'll go ahead and put it at like three. So let's go to our config.py and we'll do block underscore layer equals three. So of course, whenever it's drawing out your layers, it'll go layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five. So we want it to draw the block layer before it draws the player layer. But while we're in here, let's go ahead and put our ground layer in here because we didn't do that earlier. So ground layer equals one. Now we'll go back to our sprites.py. And remember whenever we did the self.layer on this, let's change this to ground layer. That way it's following our config file. So now we'll go back to our tree class and we'll set it into two groups. We'll set it in the self.groups equals self dot game dot all sprites. That way when we do the all sprite update, it'll actually include this in the all sprites. But we also want it to be part of a separate group too, so that we can just update the trees. So we'll do self dot game dot trees. And then we'll do pi game dot sprite dot sprite dot double underscore initialize self self dot groups. I will do self dot x equals x times tile size and we'll do self dot y equals y times tile size and we'll do self dot width and self dot height equals tile size tile size. So this is just kind of combining our variables. So to plug in tile size from here to the width, and then it'll plug in tile size to the height from here. So next we'll do self.image equals self.game.terrain sprite sheet dot get sprite. Then we want to plug in the coordinates. So if we open up our terrain sprite sheet, we're just going to grab that first tree right there. So we're going to start at the zero, zero coordinates. So we'll plug in zero, comma, zero. And then we want to grab the tile size. So we'll do self.width and self.height. Now we want it to interpret it as a rectangle. So we'll do self.rect equals self.image at rect and self.rect.x equals self.x and self.rect.y equals self.y. And then if you look back at our terrain, you'll notice the background's white and we want to ignore that. So it'll just pull the image and make it transparent. So with that, we need to do color key. And we want to set this to white. So now we've got this class built. Let's go ahead and put some of these inside of our map. 
So let's go to maps. And let's just make a border around it. So let's delete all these dots up here. Let's put T for trees. And let's copy this for the bottom too. So that we got a top and bottom border. Now then let's put the T's here. Instead of going through and like manually changing them all, let's just go ahead and copy them. I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go. Control C for copy, paste. Paste, 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 and then the row with the player on it, we're going to manually put them in, which of course we're not really using this. We manually put in the coordinates for the player, but later on you might want to actually have it set there, like where you put the P, but for now we'll just leave it on there. So now we need to go to our map build, and we need to check and see if whenever that T is on the map, that it will write that class onto it. So let's do another if statement. So we'll do if column double equals t, then we will run our tree class. And we'll plug in those parameters. So we'll do self, j, and i. And let's try that out. Okay, we got an error, line 38 on sprites. So we forgot to do the layer update. So in new, we need to create self.trees equals pygame.sprite.layeredupdates. Now let's try it. Now we have the trees around. Let's see if we can walk through them. See, we can still walk through them, even though it made our trees we want to make sure that we're not actually walking through them. So let's change that. So we need to go back into our player.py and go into our update. And we want to set some collisions in here. We just would do self.collide trees x self.collide trees y. But now we need to create this collide trees. So let's go down here, define collide trees. And we need to plug in self and the direction. And then we'll do a couple of if statements. If direction double equals x, then we'll make a new variable called hits. And we'll equal pygame.sprite.spritecollide self self game dot trees and false so what this will do is it'll put it in the group of trees and then false what that will do is it'll make sure it doesn't destroy the object when we hit it and that'll be useful later on but for now we want the trees to be there even if we run into them so if hits and if self dot exchange greater than zero, meaning if it's moving, then we'll do a for loop for sprite in self dot game dot all sprites do sprite dot rect dot x plus equals player speed. Then we'll do a self dot rect dot x equals hits zero dot rect dot left minus self dot rect dot width. Now I'll go into more detail about what all this does later on, but for now you just got to know that it's going to stop it whenever it runs into the object. We also got to set the other edge. So we'll do if self dot exchange less than zero and for sprite and self dot aim dot all sprites sprite dot rect dot x minus equals player speed self dot rect dot x equals its zero dot rect dot right. So basically what this code's doing is it's checking the right and left edge 
of the image to see if we're colliding and if it is then it's going to stop it by the player speed okay but now we need to do the top and bottom the same way we just did the left and right so now we need to do if direction double equals y double equals y then it's equals pi game dot sprite dot sprite sprite collide and we need to do the self self dot game trees and we need to do false we don't want it to get destroyed so then if hits if self dot y change greater than zero or sprite and self dot game all sprites and self dot rect dot y plus equals player speed and self dot rect dot y equals hits zero dot rect dot top minus self dot rect dot height if self dot y change less than zero then for sprite and self dot game dot all sprites sprite dot rect dot y minus equals player speed self dot rect dot y equals hits rect dot bottom and real quick I accidentally made an error here it's not self that's supposed to be sprite dot rect so now let's try to run our code and see what it does so we've got our guy he walks around just fine. Let's try to run into a tree and it stops, but now it's kind of glitching out. So you can see, so there's an error with the code. So what we need is we need it to actually be plugging this in after the change of the rect X and the rect Y. So what we'll do is we'll move this to here this to here. We get in after that. Let's clear out some of these spaces to look a little cleaner. And with that, let's try it out and see what it does. Let's run into the trees. Not going through the trees anymore. That was our issue. So now we've got a nice border. We can set those where we want to. Into our map. Let's just put a bunch of trees right here. Maybe down here. See how that works. Now we got trees there. You can run into them. No errors, no issues. So it looks like our game's working so far. But now let's say that we don't really want them to all look the exact same. Well, fortunately for us, we've already got four different types of trees. But let's say we just want them placed randomly, all four of these, so that they don't all look the same. So with that, let's go back to our tree class. And instead of having our image set directly to this, let's have it like randomly select through a list of images and change the trees. So with this, what we'll do is we'll do each tree as their own section. So we're gonna create a list for each tree. Let's do tree equals zero, zero. So let's do tree underscore one. So we're gonna do four different trees for each image. Now I know the coordinates of each of these trees already. Now you're welcome to go and check it on your own, but. I'm going to go ahead and just punch in the coordinates here. Tree 2, tree 3, tree. And 
we are going to pull them out of the same terrain sheet that we've been using. So let's do tree list equals, and let's create a list with these trees in it. So we'll do tree one, tree two, tree three, and tree four. Now we need to select our tree by random choice. So we'll do random dot choice, and then we'll do the tree list. So this will run through our trees, it'll randomly select one, and it'll plug it in on this variable. So now what we need to do is we need to plug it in here. So in order to do that, we'll do tree, and then we need to plug in the coordinates. So a list starts with zero, it doesn't start with one. So we want the first item on the list for the x coordinates. So we'll do tree zero for the x coordinates, and then we'll do tree one for the y coordinates. So you got x coordinates, which will be the zero place on the list, and then the y coordinates. So with that, that should randomly place this as an image every time it calls this into our map. So let's check it out. See now all of our trees are random so they don't just look all the same. So this will make it look like you put a little bit more thought into your game. And they all work the same. So running into them and getting a block. Now we're making it a pretty good ways with our game. So that'll conclude this part of this tutorial. If you've enjoyed it so far, please like and subscribe. Thanks.